consider this definition of the factorial function. We saw this before in a previous module, but I'll briefly explain it again. The factorial function takes an int and returns an int. The function body is defined using the if then else construct. If the int argument given is 0, then it returns the value 1. Otherwise, it returns the value of the else block. Another way to define the factorial function is like so. We've called the function fact here, rather than factorial, just to avoid the name clash that would occur if they both had the same name. You will notice that the type signatures of the two functions are the same. They both take an int and return an int. But the second definition has a peculiarity. At first glance, it looks like we are defining the function twice. And surely that wouldn't be allowed. Well, when we initially spoke about defining functions, I said, we use the equals sign to bind an identifier to an expression and each identifier has a specific type signature. An identifier is just a name for a variable or the name for a function. So our identifiers in this case are the function names of factorial and fact. Up until now, every code example I have shown only had a single binding for each identifier, but we will now explore how we can use pattern matching to provide as many bindings to the identifier that we like. Pattern matching allows you to define functions in your Haskell code like you are defining a system of equations in mathematics. We will come back to this factorial example in a bit, but for now, let's delve into pattern matching more so we can understand how it works and what the rules are. Pattern matching is a technique where a specific variable value is tested to see whether it matches a provided pattern. Quite often, we will bind the matched variable to a name, which we can then use in the function body as well. The set of values which can be tested for a match is defined by the type for the parameter. Let's see what we mean with an example. Suppose we have a function f, which takes a bool and returns an int. We know that the parameter to the function will be a bool, and so we can provide bindings for the f function, where the function parameter has specific patterns of bool, like so. When we call the function, we provide a value for the bool, and Haskell matches the given pattern with the correct binding. So when I said before that the set of values that can be tested against is defined by the type, you can see that clearly here in action. Since the type of the variable is bool, there are only two possible values, true or false, and we have bindings for all possible cases here. Let's look at another example. Suppose we have a function g, which takes an int and returns an int. We know that the parameter to the function will be an int, and so what we can do is provide bindings to the function where the function parameter has specific patterns of int, like so. And this will work when we call the function with an int value, for which we have a pattern match like here. But we know from the type signature that the first parameter to g can be an int and that an int can be less than 0 or greater than 4. And there are values for which we have not provided any patterns which will match. So what will happen when we call the function with the argument of 5? Well, it will blow up in your face. We get an exception stating that g has non-exhaustive patterns. This means Haskell was unable to match g of 5 to any patterns which we have defined. If you noticed, g is just defining specific cases of the factorial function, which we have been using as an example on previous slides. Let's return to it again. In this case, we have only two patterns for the parameter to the fact function. The first one is 0, which is an instance of int and will of course match when the argument passed to the function is 0. The second pattern is not actually an instance of int, it is just a parameter name we have given it. This type of pattern, where you provide a name for the parameter, beginning with the lowercase letter, actually matches against any instance of int. These are the types of patterns which we were using in all of the previous modules. They worked because these patterns match against all inputs. And so when you try to calculate the factorial of something using this fact function, one of these two patterns will always match and run. Pattern alternatives are tried sequentially, from top to bottom. And so we should define them so that the more specific cases appear above the more general ones. Suppose we were to define our factorial function like so. We've called our function fact, followed by an apostrophe. This is somewhat common in certain styles of older Haskell, and we pronounce it as fact prime. So we define fact prime such that the more general pattern is above the more specific one. When we try to load this in GHCI, we actually get a warning which says that the second pattern match is redundant. This is because Haskell will go from top to bottom and the top will always match and so the second one is actually unreachable. You need to be aware of this, so make sure that you write your code so that no situation like this occurs.
This video is a clip from a longer video for beginners starting with Haskell. Check that out if you would like to see all of the content. Also check out the entire Introduction to Functional Programming with Haskell course on the LIGO Learn channel. See you next time.